Uh, we're going to do the Pringles Can Enigma activity. We're going to take a look at the two builds uh, using a uh, snack size and a full size. Uh, this one's actually, I think it's got some bonus at the top, so we'll see that there's actually going to be a, a little too much room uh, on this one. Um, but uh, they'll still work out fine. Um, so one of the things we need to know is when you print out the worksheet, um, there's a PDF option. When you print something out, you can print it out full size or scale to fit. Um, so uh, what we see here is that there's a difference between the two print options. Um, this is scale to fit and this is full size. Uh, we've got to make sure when we print out the PDF that it's printed out full size because this scale to fit um, doesn't fit a Pringles can. So if you print out scale to fit, it's trash. Uh, so we need full size. So I've got a couple copies uh, just in case I mess up, but uh, we only need uh, one for each. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we need to cut out the strips. Uh, if we're going to make a full size, we need all five strips. If we're going to make a snack size, we need the input, uh, rotor one, and reflector, or rotor two, rotor three. So you might as well cut them all out anyway. Um, but now we'll cut them out. Uh, if you forget which ones are which, uh, just remember, well, they're marked they're marked down at the bottom, but if you forget, um, one, two, and three are numbered. Uh, the input always has the arrow, and the reflector always has the um, loops uh, going back. So order matters. I need my input, my reflector, three, two, one. All right, if we're gonna build the full-size Pringles, yeah, so you can see when these are together, there's a lot of space left on these ones. So usually the standard Pringles comes to about here. This is the apparently the bonus. Um, uh, so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap these around um, the Pringles like this, All right? And then tape them over the tab at the bottom. So then we line them up. And usually the first time we do this, we're gonna line up all the A's. A, 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 A. So this would be a rotor setting. A, 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 A. Not an encryption. This is the rotor setting. For the encryption, if I wanted to encrypt an A, for, to encrypt and decrypt, I follow the paths. But for rotor settings, I line them up across the top. These two rotors won't change. These two rotors might. I may have a rotor setting where these two are different, but as I encrypt letters, these two don't move, these three do. A, 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 A is my rotor setting. To encrypt an A, I would now follow the path. I don't care about these letters along the way. I only care what I get back. A encrypts to L. In the setting, a, 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 A encrypts to L. B, in the setting A, 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 B encrypts to C. In the setting A, 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 C encrypts to B. Notice what happened there. In this rotor setting, B encrypts to C, C encrypts to B. 
So what's interesting about this enigma is that whether you're encrypting or decrypting, the process is the same. If I started with a B and it was the encrypted B, it would decrypt to a C. To encrypt a C, it becomes a B, only in the rotor setting AAAA. In the rotor setting of AAA, BA, A will now encrypt to N and vice versa. So this is the three rotor enigma. Most complex, uh, we could put a fourth or a fifth on this size can. But what we wanna show you is how uh, a one rotor enigma works because we got some puzzles. We got some puzzles online for this. Don't forget your rotor setting is consistent every time. After every letter, you shift rotor number three, always the rightmost rotor, not the reflector, always the rightmost rotor. After every letter, shift one place. Shift one place and keep decrypting or encrypting. Uh, if my rotor setting was cyber, C, Y, C, Y, B, E, R. If my rotor setting was cyber, I would start with cyber, reading across, and then after every letter, I shift this one once. After every letter, I shift this one once. And this is how cyber would be a rotor setting. Okay, let's take a look at the small can. So if you wanna build a snack size uh, Pringles Enigma device, um, we only need one rotor, not one, two, and three, uh, but either just one or uh, just two or just three, uh, but I don't need all three, so I can I can pick whichever one I want. Uh, so when I'm when I'm encrypting or decrypting with one of these Pringles can enigmas, uh, it's important to note how many rotors, the order of the rotors, and the starting rotor position. Uh, so if all of my letters line up A A A, that would be a starting rotor position of A A A. Um, but if my uh, starting rotor position was C A B, then I would have to line up the C with the A and the B. That's my starting position. <clears throat> but if I was using a one rotor with rotor two, C A B, just have to make sure you have the right rotor installed. So we're going to install rotor one on this snack size uh, can of Pringles. So uh, from left to right, I need my input, my input rotor reflector from left to right. And I'm gonna build it towards the lid, uh, just personal preference. Uh, so I need a small piece of tape and my input. And I'm gonna put the input right here at the seam at the bottom, wrap this around, cover the word input. And that's where the tape goes. Not too tight that it can't rotate. I want it to be able to rotate. Not too tight that I can't rotate. I also don't want it too loose that it slips off past the seal. So that's pretty good. Uh, a little bit of a bigger piece of tape. And again, make sure the letters face the same way. A little tight, that'll be all right. Uh, and you'll see this one fits perfectly on a small snack size Pringles can. I'm gonna slide this under the seal because I haven't eaten them yet. Save that for after we solve a puzzle. All right, now that we're assembled, we can take a look at rotor settings and encryption and decryption. So I've got rotor one in place. My rotor setting is AAA. And if I were to encrypt an A, now I follow the paths. Again, I don't care the letters that I pass. I just wanna know where I come out and I come out on an I. So on a rotor setting of AAA with rotor number one, A encrypts to I. Where does B go on a rotor setting of AAA? B goes to E. So on a rotor setting of AAA, a B encrypts to E. What if I change that rotor setting though to an ABA? On ABA, now an A encrypts to F or a B encrypts to Z. 
So the rotor setting matters how letters encrypt and decrypt. Similarly, on the three rotor with the order of one, two, three, on the setting of AAA, and A encrypts to an L, and a B encrypts to a C. If I had a snack size Pringles can enigma instead loaded with rotor two on AAA, an A encrypts to C, and a B encrypts to D. And then I could, I could swap out the rotors. I could put rotor three on, or I could change the order of these rotors, but keep in mind that means the, the encryption and decryptions are all gonna change. So let's get back to this. I wanna encrypt and decrypt a message. The rotors don't always stay AAA. Uh, this pattern changes with every letter. How does it change? After every letter, I, I do what's called index. I index my rotor. On this snack size Enigma, I only have one rotor. These stay, the input and the reflector, they stay in place. The, uh, the rotor indexes after every letter. So if my first letter is encrypted with the rotor settings of AAA, my second letter is gonna be ABA, my third letter ACA. When is this pattern going to repeat? If my message contains 26 letters, the 27th letter, my enigma will be back to AAA. If that 27th letter was the same letter as the first letter, then I would have the same result from enigma. But if it was a different letter, it's going to encrypt a totally different way. On the three rotor enigma, after every letter, the rightmost rotor, remember this is the input, this is the reflector. The rightmost rotor indexes after every letter. So if my setting is A-A-A-A-A, and I have to encrypt a five letter word, my first letter is gonna be encrypted with A-A-A-A-A, index. My second letter is gonna be encrypted this way. My third letter. Well, what happens after 26 letters here? After 26 letters, my 27th letter, so there's letter 26, A-A-A-Z-A. -A -A my 27th letter, now it's like carrying the 10, right? Carrying the one. Now I index rotor two and bring three back to its initial setting. And then I do 26 letters on this one. So 26 times 26, that's the first time I would ever have to index my first of three rotors. That's a lot of different combinations on this model of an enigma, which is why it was so effective at the time. But here, we're gonna, we're gonna practice encryption on this stack size. All right, so I've got a message. I wanna encrypt the message wash. I see that my rotor setting is only three letters. That means it must be one of these. And, and I know for a fact that this was written, that this is gonna be encrypted with a, a one rotor, number one rotor, Enigma. So I want my setting to be A, B, C. So A, B, C. My rotor settings are always read across. To encrypt, I follow the path and I want to encrypt the word wash. So I start with W and I follow it around and W becomes an A. And I index. So instead of A, B, C, now it's going to be A, C, C. And I'm going to encrypt my A and my A becomes a B. I index, and now it's a B, C, and I'm gonna encrypt an S, and an S becomes a Q, and I index a E, C, and I encrypt an H. And my encrypted version of WASH becomes A, B, Q, P, right? That's my ciphertext. Wash is my plain text. A, B, Q, P is my ciphertext. Now I would pass this message to someone else with the rotor settings and some way to identify the B as a rotor number one. 
and they could decrypt this into WASH. All right. Someone left us an encrypted message. Snack size. And I know for a fact that this was written with rotor number one. So let's decrypt EBLWM with CAT as my rotor setting. So C A T is my rotor setting. C A T. First letter is E. E decrypts to H. And I index. CBT. A B becomes an A. Index. L becomes an N. Index. W becomes a D. Index. M. becomes S. What are we going to do during coronavirus? Wash hands. That's it. Good luck. Encrypt some messages. Decrypt some messages. Eat some Pringles. Show us how you use your Pringles can Enigma. Thanks. Have a great day. Stay safe.